Hello, YouTubers, fellow subscribers. I'm making this video today to follow up on a promise. My, the last video I did, the Rafa unboxing of my the Festive 500 kit, basically ran out of time, you know. And I, I had promised in that video we're going to do some historical jerseys that I have. I mean, let's face it. Uh, I've raced for a long time. I've, I've, I acquired a lot of jerseys over the years. I don't really need jerseys anymore. So the only jerseys I buy now are jerseys that have history behind them. They commemorate something. They, leave, they have a memory. They're a part of cycling folklore. And there is a company called Rafa. Hate it or love it. They spend an inordinate amount of time telling us about that history. I mean, there are things that I've learned from articles and other stuff, and then things I've learned from just owning their jerseys that just blows me away. And so I want to share some of that with you. If you guys like it, let me know. I've got a lot of jerseys. I can't cover all of them in one video. But what I want to do is start out with a couple of jerseys today based on the suggestion of one of our subscribers that I mentioned earlier. And I want to just follow up. So this is going to be a cycling jersey history. And I've, decided, I've picked two jerseys that I've decided to cover. Uh, one of my heroes from cycling is Greg LeMond. And the main reason is just the grit and the determination that he showed over the years with all the adversity that he faced. So even though he was supremely talented, he did not just rest on his laurels. He worked hard. And that just really has been an inspiration for me. So I'm going to start with the jersey that Rafa created to commemorate a part of Greg's career. Uh, this is a, they called it a trade team jersey. I don't buy these to so just hang them up. I actually use these. I ride with them. And my friend suggested that I do this because a lot of people don't know. You know, if you really are not into the history of cycling, I wear these jerseys. Nobody says anything. I like the way they look and everything, and that's fine. Uh, other than my buddy, nobody else knows what these jerseys are about. So he said, you know, you need to share this with the guys out there so they can kind of get a feel for our sport. So if this goes over well, I have many more jerseys that have really beautiful and colorful histories behind them. I mean, even how Rafa picked his name, I've got a jersey that commemorates that. And if you guys are interested, just let me know. But what I want to do here is, this is the trade team jersey that came out with a couple of seasons ago. And I'm going to put on my glasses because what Rafa does is they put the history of the jersey. The jersey has three pockets. And in one of the pockets, they put a zippered compartment. It's like an internal zip. And inside there is where they have the history of this jersey. I'm just going to let you kind of see. You can't really read it because it's so tiny. I've got the pocket open. And I may have to take it off the hanger to really read it to you. So my plan is to read this to you. But I want to show you what Rafa does. So inside this pocket where you can put coins or whatever. Let me start this way. This, this is the, one of your pockets that you can put stuff in. And inside that pocket, they have a zippered internal pocket. So it's already zippered there. And you can unzip it. And inside that zipper compartment where you can put money, keys, or whatever, they have a flap. If you look inside the jersey, you hear that sound? There's a flap. There's an internal pocket there. And inside that pocket, onto the fabric... It's almost like a canvas that they have written a story on. Let me pull it out so you guys can see. That's the story. And you can see how small it is. So it's inside this, part, this coin pocket where you can put money, your keys, whatever. You have to turn it inside out to read the story. So if you don't know it's there, you're not going to find it. And that was his point. You need to do this. You need to tell people about it so they can find out. I mean, you have to... Pretty much uh, look for this. They mentioned it when they're selling this, but very briefly. And it says Ark in Seal. And they explain what they mean by that. So I'm going to read that to you about this jersey. So on the trade team jerseys two seasons ago, Rafa created this jersey to commemorate. The shades that you see on here, if you look at the front of the jersey, you got those sunglasses. You got Lemon was going against tradition. The glasses he wore, everything, you know, he, he just set 
new standards, new broke, new you know the rules, and so they're, they're commemorating that. He used to wear those big Oakleys. So let me read this to you. In 1986, on the dead end Côte du Granon, Greg LeMond, the American wonder kind, swapped his Destifle inspired La Declare jersey for the all yellow leader's jersey. His victory that year was a sign of the changing of the guard. The French dominance represented by Bernard Eno was giving way to the flashy arc in seal of international riders and global money pouring into the sport. Eno gave way begrudgingly when he attacked Le Monde on the stage to Abdouez he appeared to be reneging on his pledge to support his younger English speaking teammate because in 1985 if it wasn't for Greg Le Monde you know, would not have won the Tour de France Greg had to wait for him they gave him false information you know, it was not going very well and Greg was following other riders and had Greg kept riding, he would have won the tour in 85. And it was because of him. And so he, he promised that he was going to work for Greg in 86. And then, of course, we know what happened for those of us who are in the know. That's what this is about. Eno says he was distancing their mutual enemy. Yeah, right. Or Zimmerman. While Le Mans fearing partisan French fans attempted to play it safe. But what really happened on the Abdouaz that day? As someone once said, there are three sides to every story. Your side, my side, and the truth. And no one is lying. <laughs> so that's what Rafa wrote. So this jersey, when I wear it, and the reason I decided to buy it was, uh, I followed Greg LeMond. He's one of the reasons I got into cycling. And so when I ride this jersey, what I just read you goes with me on, on that ride. When I put this jersey on, that goes through my mind. You know, just what he went through. You know, being in a foreign land, his Americanism, and buttoned up against, you know, cycling is a very traditional sport. Cycling is not an elitist sport. You know, we got fancy stuff we're wearing nowadays, but cycling, when it started... Guys that used to work in the mines came out. It was a way out. They went to go ride the tour. A way out from working in the mines. So it was a working man's sport. So the next time you see people acting hoity-toity like these guys that take themselves seriously at these rides, just smile because they have no clue. You know, this is, an this is a sport for the common man. It's for everybody. You know, so don't, don't, don't fall for that. That's the reason I follow the history because I don't nobody nobody can say anything to me that would make me feel like you know I don't belong or you know oh you don't belong to this group or you're not you know because I know better I know the history of the sport history is very important and that's why I take the time to kind of share that with people so the next time you go to a ride and somebody got their nose up in the air just smile because they have no clue you know so I just wanted to share that with you the second jersey that they did that same year and the reason I'm doing these together is because we just talked about Bernard Eno. Bernard Eno has won the tour since 1981. I think he won his first tour. And if it weren't for Greg LeMond in 85, like I said, he would not have won number five. And so I can understand he's a competitor. There's no way you're going to lay down. But don't make a promise you can't keep and then try to make up stories talking about you were chasing Urzuma Man or whatever else or trying to distance Zimmerman. We know what, what that was about. This jersey was made to commemorate the new, you know, the, the La Claire team. The original La Claire jersey. Where is it? Uh, right here. This is the original La Claire jersey. Okay, this is, this is the jersey that Le Mans, you know, all of them wore when they, when they were under the La Claire team. This is Rafa's take on the Lavi Claire jersey and all the new colorful jerseys that were coming on in the 80s, the mid 80s. That's their take on it. I'm going to read you the story. So that's what Rafa does. They don't, they don't come in and just replicate 
a team jersey. They put a spin on it. And I've got many other jerseys that they did for the SCIC team and other things. And I need you guys to let me know if you want to see that because I'll do that. I don't want you guys to be bored. I don't want to, you know, inundate you with stuff you don't want to hear. But this, so this is the spin on, basically Rafael is saying that. I'm going to read it. I'll just read it straight to you. It's in the pocket again. Let me take it out completely. And they wear they, they put it on, on a fabric that will never fade. I mean, it, it, this thing is permanent. It's really neat. It says, in 1981, the Frenchman, Bernard Eno, and it's spelled H-I-N-A-U-L-T, but it's pronounced like the H is not there. It's Eno, like the I. Bernard Eno won his third Tour de France in 1981, riding for the all-French team sponsored by a French car brand, that was the Renault team. That's where those stripes on the jersey. Okay. French car brand and riding a French made bike. The Peugeot. Renault's bold yellow and black kit had ushered in a new era of big money and shouted loud Gallic peloton style. The team was directed by Cyril Guimard. Cyril Guimard was the reason Greg LeMond, the coach, it was the reason Greg LeMond signed with La Viclaire because he was an ex-rider who was very knowledgeable about training and position and all of that, physiology. So Cyril Gouma, who like Enolt, hailed from France's rural Northwest and supplied a robust blend of bravado and tactics. The more metropolitan and refined Laurent Fignon from Paris, from Paris would also ride for Renault, but the French public didn't take him to their heart as they did the blue collar Bernard. In Renault's seven years of existence, Enold and Fignon won six tours before the team reconfigured without the famous French car Marquis as the all French dominance began to subside. So basically they were dominating the tour. The French, the French riders were dominating the tour. So Raphael looked at the jersey that the Renault team had and some of the colors, and they came up with their take on it. So if you look at the original Peugeot jersey, you will see the resemblance on here. And I, I've always thought that that's very, very cool, very subtle, because it's more interesting than just copying the jersey like the one I just showed you and just making a replica of it. They make a unique jersey. They put the history in the pocket. And every time I wear this, I know what this is about, you know? So this is what I wanted to cover today, just to let you guys know that not every jersey on Rafa has necessarily a history, but when they come out with their trade team jerseys, they come out with limited collector's edition, I'm going to show you one more as I close this video. This is a recent one I just got. It is really cool. This is the most recent one. This is the Team Sky replica jersey because Team Sky is ending the relationship of, of uh, sponsorship for their, their, their jersey with Rafa 2016. Mutually agreeable, they're parting ways. You know, I think Team Sky is going to, Castelli is going to be supporting them. But what was classy is I thought that Rafa announced that this thing was ending, I think, early 2016. And what did they do? They put out a jersey. This one did not go on sale. I went ahead and snatched it up because I wanted to, I wanted to have one, okay? This is made out of merino wool. So it's uh, a three season jersey. You could probably wear it in early summer, but you know, you know, most of the year you can wear it. What is cool is Rafa put every rider that has ever ridden for Team Sky on the sleeves. All, their names are on here. Whether they're with the team currently or not, every rider that has ever ridden for them. All the races they have won. You see the badges on the jersey. All their races, the Tours, Paris Nice, and then they put the, uh, you can see the three Tour de France uh, with Chris Froome, and then what's his name, uh, <coughs> Wiggins, Chris Froome and Wiggins, so they have the map of France with the French flag, a take on it in, in the middle, I mean, so all these little touches on the back, so think about it. If I didn't do this video and I went on a ride, you'd have to know what this was about. 
to say, hey, cool jersey or whatever. Because on the front, all it says is, it says Team Sky and it says Rafa. That's it. And this is not their jersey that they normally wrote. The, 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 the color scheme is the same. Then on the neck, it says 2013 to 2016. So this is a conversation piece. Let me see if they put something in the pocket. I don't think they did. Um, I didn't really look. Yeah, they did. Ha! <laughs> you know, it's been it's been here for at least uh, a couple of months. I, I got it when it came out because I have a feeling it's going to sell out, especially among the guys in the UK. Um, so they put something in the pocket. I didn't realize I was there. A little thing. I'm going to read that to you guys. See what's on there. It says, never rest on your laurels. There is always room for improvement. The training camps, the data, the research, and the effort, the endless quest to move forward harder, faster, better. Then what have they done? They listed all the main races that they did that Team Sky had con has conquered, basically has won. All the names of the races that they've won, they crossed them out. In other words, that's almost like a list of like a, a goal, you know, a list of all, your, all your, your goals to accomplish. And as you accomplish them, you put a line through it, you know, then all these badges. So if I put this jersey on and went on a ride, the average cyclist would just see a jersey. And maybe if they saw this, I like how subtle it is on the front, because if you're down the drops, they're not going to notice it. But they're just going to see a jersey with a lot of badges on it. Unless you're a student of the game, you're not going to know that these badges represent all these races. I mean, some of these places are not very famous. You know, you got Algarve. I mean, unless you're keeping up with it, you're not going to know what Algarve is. You got uh, Costa del Sol, Austria, uh, Copo, Copo y Batali. You know, Copi y Batali, that's Fausti, Fausto Copi and uh, Batali. They have a race in their honor. So other than, let's say, the International Criterion, the Dauphiné Libre, there are just a bunch of, you know, you got Harold Becky, Yorkshire, Oman, La Dunyan. I mean, you have to be a student of cycling to appreciate all of these. These are the kind of jerseys I like to wear and see who strikes up a conversation. You know, who's been doing their homework? I like this and I, you know, I, I plan on using it. It's not going to just be hanging. So I got that because chances are it's not going to be around. I just wanted to share that with you guys. And I have a feeling that it kind of lets you see that Simon, I think it's been Simon Mortran. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. The, the founder and CEO is also a cyclist of Rafa. This guy is into cycling. It's in his blood. And I think that's really cool that besides selling us stuff, he's educating a guy like me. You know, I, I don't know anything about cycling. Nobody else in my family rides bikes. You know, so how would I have known anything about this kind of stuff? I happen to be interested in cycling. I read the magazines, all of that. I don't know if you guys remember Velo News. I used to get that in the mail. I could not wait when it came. I would not put it down, read through the whole thing. Be back, back in the day before the web was the web. You know, we had to wait for magazines and the articles are usually, you know, weeks be behind when things actually occur. Now we get them right like that. So, you know, so I really, I learned a lot about it and they just confirmed me a lot of things. I already knew a lot of these races. I would read up about them because I love watching them. Now with YouTube, we get to see them. But I watch a lot of these so-called obscure races to just see the tactics and all the hard work these guys do before they get to the big ones. And so it's kind of cool to see that they didn't just put badges for just the tours. I like how they just did three yellow stars. I mean, kind of goalish, but it's really for the tours. And they put big badges for those so-called obscure races. A lot of these races people here don't know about. You know, so uh, I wanted to share that with you. I got a bunch of other jerseys that have a lot of deeper things where they're talking about Fausto Cuppy, you know, talking about uh, the history of Rafa. You know, how did Cuppy die? You know, uh, how did Rafa come up with that name? 
you know, that name is deep. There's a lot of history behind it. So if you want to hear that, let me know. Give me a shout out and I'll do the video for you. But I wanna, I'm going to go ahead and stop here. And this is just a history lesson on a few of the jerseys. And thanks to Rafa for reliving our history in cycling and, and commemorating them and getting them memorialized on these jerseys. Kudos to you guys and be cool out there and hold your head up high. Don't let anything stop you from riding your bike.